Hey, freaks, it's Tuesday, September 5th, 2023. Coming up on the program today, when your pumpkin spice latte helps you reach orgasm. Plus, vagina phobia, cock blocked while on Viagra, and renting out the unused side of your bed to strangers. All this plus your voicemails today. Oh, mama. It's Sextastic Tuesday. Uh, on Distorted View. Force feed me that black, dark fucking meat. I need a fucking black dick. That's the my white fucking lily crack. Feed me fucking dark meat. I'm no fucking vegetarian. It's like me blowing your dark nuts Fuck them white fucking hoes. Black dog in my cunt. Violate my white ass crack. Fuck me up. I want to be your white slave. I'm going to be your white sex slave. Fucking dudes to the black man. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. 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 Come Hi, Galileo2333. Beta man. Full bloom AIDS. Are you on the internet? Isn't that for techno geeks with spreadsheets? Well, as you all know, hot dog is my favorite meat. It's just a fun thing. Yes, Tim Henson back here with you to kick off a new week of programs on a Tuesday. Hopefully for those of you in America who are able to take Labor Day off, I hope you all had a great long weekend. Mine sucked. When do I ever get on the podcast here and say, I had a great weekend? Never. There's always some calamity, some horrible thing that ruins my entire weekend. Now, what did I tell you I wanted to do? Go go back and listen to the Friday show. All I want, I said, I am going to finish Zelda. I'm going to play Tears of the Kingdom all weekend and just veg out. For once, I'm not going to do a show and I'm not going to worry about making one up. I also... If you listen to the Friday show, uh, poked fun at uh, our older dog. And I'm regretting that. I feel kind of bad, even though I I did end up saying that she is going to outlive us all. And, you know, on my deathbed, she will be licking my ear, making that noise I hate, laughing maniacally, saying, I won, asshole. Well, unfortunately, that's not how things played out on Friday Friday, the Friday evening, uh, she was uh, not doing well, um, breathing all crazy. And so we brought her into the 24 hour vet where she stayed overnight. They had her like on oxygen and all that fucking shit. Right. Well, things did not improve. So, yeah, it was not a fun weekend. We had to uh, say goodbye to little Rukia. I am collecting dog ashes. 
Like they're fucking Pokemon over here. My mantle is getting full. This is the problem with always having like three or four dogs. It's like, and they're all different ages. So like every mm, three or four years, another one croaks and it's uh, just super fucking depressing. Every time a dog dies, you know, I, you know, I'll tell my mom eventually. I'm like, hey, you know, we had to put down one of the dogs. Wasn't doing well. And my mom would always say, why do you, why do you insist on having dogs? This is what happens. You need to just stop getting them. She's not a pet person. She doesn't understand the appeal of, of animals, I think. She was always like a neat freak. And so the idea of just having something that sheds fur in the house drove her insane. Like she couldn't comprehend why anyone would live like that. But I can't help it. The second I was actually able to, uh, you know, get a dog myself when I was old enough and somewhat responsible, um, it, it quickly became clear that I'm a dog person. So I will probably always have a, a dog or two even though this part of it uh, is the worst, the absolute worst. Uh, so that's what I was dealing with. And I did not get to play Zelda this weekend, adding insult to injury, or in this case, insult to death. You know, more than just injury. <laughs> Listen, uh, despite uh, the circle of life closing once again on uh, a beloved pet, I have a great show for you today. <laughs> got, I don't know. I don't know how to make that transition. I got to talk about a fucking dog dying. Now I finally see what Casey Kasem was so upset about. It's hard to make those fucking transitions. <laughs> I got to talk about a fucking dog dying. Listen, uh, you know, it's rare <laughs> that I do a Tuesday show for everyone. So I'm going to take this opportunity and bring back an old favorite. Some people consider it an old favorite. Others are getting ready to hit that fast forward button. Yes, I'm talking about Sextastic Tuesday. This is a dumb bit where I try to find poorly written, strange, or disgusting sex stories. These pieces of internet erotica were created to get you off. They were written for horny individuals to titillate, excite, and aid in masturbation. The stories featured on Sextastic Tuesday, though, miss the mark in a big, big way. Basically, I'm looking for the worst of the worst. Now, you know, I've been doing my old lady walks just about every day. And one thing I'm starting to notice is the leaves are falling from the trees. We're just we're at the beginning stage of that. Uh, and then add to that Starbucks officially launching their yearly pumpkin spice latte. Well, it all adds up to one thing. We're in autumn, baby. And no one goes more gaga for the season than basic white bitches. These cunts are fishing out their apple cinnamon candles, prepping their big bulky sweaters, and of course, sipping on their daily PSLs. I think I have found the perfect piece of erotica for this time of year. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, seduced by the pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> Sextastic. Melissa opened her eyes slowly, not really sure why she was awake. She'd woken up unassisted at, she looked at her phone on the bedside table, 6.23 a.m. with no alarm, no noise, no nothing. Suddenly she realized what day it was. It was the first day that pumpkin spice lattes were available at Starbucks this year. Spice lattes are just about her favorite thing in the whole wide world. Right after Taylor Swift, brunch, and braids she learned about on Pinterest. Well, and Pinterest, of course. In any event, Melissa loved her a PSL, and she was ready to get her fall on, girl. Even though it was only early September, and it was still like 70 degrees outside. Wake me up before you go, go. Melissa jumped out of bed, slipping on her Ugg boots, which she preferred to slippers, of course, and walked over to her closet. She needed to look good for her first PSL. So she selected a pair of yoga pants, some cute sneakers, an oversized tee layered with another oversized tee, a cardigan, and three different scarves. Fall is all about layers and pumpkin spice lattes, and Melissa was stoked about both. When Melissa got to Starbucks, there was a little bit of a line, but it wasn't too bad. Finally, she reached the front, where a pretty girl with jet black hair and a Starbucks uniform said, Good morning. What can I get? A venti pumpkin spice latte, please! Extra whipped cream! Melissa blurted out before the Starbucks employee could even finish. The Starbucks girl laughed and said, It sounds like you're pretty excited about the pumpkin spice latte being back. 
And then she dropped her voice a little lower so the guy behind Melissa couldn't hear her speak. I'm pretty excited, too. I think they're the sexiest drink we sell. When she received the drink, she could feel the warmth travel through her entire body. It was almost like she was holding hands with a really hot person. Or like looking at a picture of Channing Tatum. She felt a throb in her body that was undeniable. Was she actually into this pumpkin spice latte? Like, sexually? She pushed the notion out of her mind. That was silly. You couldn't have sex with a Starbucks drink. Or could you? No, you couldn't. Could you? No. Maybe. No. That's crazy. Is it? Yes. No. Huh? What? Melissa looked around for a table where she could enjoy her PSL properly. Since it was on the early side, the Starbucks was fairly empty. And then she saw the cute Afro guy. It was a guy who had an Afro. I, I left that part out of the story because it didn't matter. He handed her the PSL. So she saw him gesturing uh, to the stairs on the side of the room. Ooh, she's going to get fucked by that guy. Uh, oh, that's right. This Starbucks had an upstairs. Oh, that's right. Starbucks is a swinger sex club. I forgot about the upstairs there where anything goes. No. All right. Uh, this Starbucks had an upstairs that people always forgot about. It had great sunlight and some wonderful armchairs that Jenna liked to sit in and read. As she sat down in one of her favorite chairs, she cupped the pumpkin spice latte in both hands. What is this feeling? She said out loud. And then a wave of desire flew over her entire body. And she finally put her lips to the rim of the pumpkin spice latte cup. Oh, it was unlike anything she ever tasted. She had pumpkin spice lattes before, sure. But this one, this one was different somehow. She let that whipped cream cover her mouth, licking it off sensually as the cream spread across her lips. Then the hot liquid took over, almost burning her, but not quite, as she took a tiny sip. As the hot, milky stuff ran down her throat, she let out a small moan. Melissa looked all around. No one was in this part of Starbucks. She was all alone with her pumpkin spice latte. As she moved in for another sip, her left hand drifted down to her breast, pinching her nipple through the layer of her cardigan and two oversized tees. She felt her nipple stiffen as she played with it, sipping the pumpkin spice latte again. The cup of PSL was so warm on her mouth that she wanted to see what it felt like on other parts of her. She brought that cup down to her breasts, feeling the warmth between them, letting the pumpkin spice aroma float up and envelop her nostrils. The pumpkin spice latte was almost moving on its own volition now, with Melissa just acting as a vessel for the sexual pleasure it was bringing her. The pumpkin spice latte moved to her right breast, massaging her with the hot cup. A small bit of PSL spilled out of the small hole in the lid and got on Melissa's oversized tea, but she didn't mind. It felt kind of good. Almost too hot, but not quite. And creamy. The pumpkin spice latte made its way down her body, caressing her belly and finally reaching the waistband of her yoga pants. Melissa looked around again. Still, no one in sight. And it didn't sound like much was going on downstairs either. Was she really going to do this? Was she going to have sex with her pumpkin spice latte in Starbucks? I think she is, guys. As though in response, her hand moved under the waistband of her yoga pants to her wet waiting clit, ready for her fingers, warmed by the pumpkin spice latte to stroke gently. The PSL remained on the outside of her yoga pants, warming her pussy through the cardboard cup, sending the scent of fall through the entire room. Melissa stroked herself as the pumpkin spice latte moved up and down her body, this time splashing a little bit of itself on every part of her. She took another sip from the cup as she worked her fingers on her clit. I'm going to fast forward a bit here. Some Starbucks employees wander upstairs. It's the woman who was checking her out or, you know, took her order. And then the uh, the black guy with the afro. They both appear. And guess what? They also have pumpkin spice lattes and they want to play, too. Melissa explored the goth girl's mouth with her tongue as both the Starbucks employees moved the pumpkin spice lattes up and down her body. She felt a small splash as the guy with the afro, I wish he had a name, uh, poured a tiny bit of the hot liquid onto her chest. Ah, oh, that's good. My breasts. 
The goth girl moved one of her pumpkin spice lattes down between Melissa's legs, and she could feel herself getting even more wet than before. The girl poured a little bit of the PSL on Melissa's yoga pants, and Melissa cried out in ecstasy. She took off her scarves and her cardigan and those two oversized tees, wanting the pumpkin spice latte and the two employees to have as much access to her body as possible. Also, not to be too practical here, but that coffee shit stains. You're never going to get that out of your yoga pants. It's going to look like you shit yourself. The goth girl took a sip of the pumpkin spice latte, swishing it around in her mouth before diving in for Melissa's nipples. She could feel the pleasant suction of the goth girl's beautiful mouth on her breasts, as well as the creaminess of the pumpkin spice latte dribbling down her body as the goth girl sucked. Meanwhile, Afro Guy was also sipping a pumpkin spice latte and uh, fingering Melissa. She could feel herself starting to reach a climax with the two hot employees' hands and mouths and pumpkin spice lattes covering what seemed like her entire body. That's when both the goth girl and the guy with the afro emptied their entire pumpkin spice lattes onto Melissa's naked body. As hot liquid splashed on her torso, the guy with the afro worked her clit like no one ever had, and Melissa felt herself come with the force of a bolt of lightning. Melissa cried. That's when the goth girl brought a second pumpkin spice latte up to Melissa's lips, saying, Now, sip, sip. I feel like this is some sort of like satanic pumpkin spice latte cult. You're being initiated or something. Uh, The sip of pumpkin spice latte made her come again, almost as hard as the first time. It was the perfect blend of spice cream and fall flavors. Wait, what? What? What was that? The two employees smiled at each other. The goth girl took Melissa's hand. There are a certain few people who we call pumpkin spice sexuals. It's very rare, but Michael and I, well, we're two of them. And we're very good at spotting our kind. This is so confusing, Melissa said. But also, that was the best orgasm I've ever had. So I guess I am a pumpkin spice sexual. They all laughed. It takes a little getting used to, but we're happy to help you explore your new sexuality, Michael said. Oh, Michael must be the Afro guy. Melissa grinned. So, same time tomorrow? Tomorrow, the goth girl said with mock horror. I was thinking I could go make us another batch right now. Pumpkin spice lattes for all of us. Yay! is your Pumpkin Spice Sextastic Tuesday for September 4th, 2023, brought to you by our amazing partners over there at adamandeve.com. For a limited time, get 50% off just about any item, half off. Where do you ever see a deal like that? Just remember to use promo code FREAK at adamandeve.com. What exactly do they have there? Oh, my God. Uh, Adult toys for him, for her, for couples, necessities, sexual wellness, lubes, gels, pastes and powders, maybe. I don't know. Lingerie, bondage. If it's adult in nature, Adam and Eve has you covered. Pick out something you like. Add it to your cart. Use promo code FREAK. Not only will you get uh, 50% off that item, you're also going to receive free shipping and a bunch of free gifts. It's an amazing deal. Adam and Eve has been uh, just a wonderful sponsor for, I don't know, a decade plus at this point. They've been in business for 50 years. You can trust them. Go to adamandeve.com. Use promo code FREAK. Let's all thank adamandeve.com for being an, an amazing sponsor over the years. Thank you so much. All right. A couple pieces of audio, and then we will get into the news. I think one of the original incels we featured on this podcast many years ago was Marshall Mathers IV. Now, about four or five months ago, he quit YouTube. But we all know what happens with Utards who retire. Usually the first 10 or 12 times, it doesn't stick. They come right back. And sure enough, Marshall Mathers IV, after a, uh, a little hiatus, is back. Oh, and he's back in a big, big way. It literally looks like he's been in hibernation. Take a look at the chapter artwork. He is growing a huge beard, which I would have to think just scares women even more than the sight of a freshly shaven Marshall Mathers IV. Anyway, uh, here he is talking about how modern women makes his blood boil. This is what got him uh, out of retirement. Women be straight up 
pissing him off. Hey guys, it's the Black Pill Joker here back to you today with another video. Oh yes, he also goes by the Black Pill Joker now because incels love to identify with the Joker. Modern day women make my blood boil. The only thing that I am at all happy about in regards to modern women is the fact that more and more men are becoming black pilled. More and more men are becoming raging incel virgins. More and more men are becoming alienated, isolated, introverted, and antisocial. Yeah, it's great. A nation full of undersect psychopaths is forming. That cannot be good. He blames all of his problems on the fact that women aren't uh, the way they used to be. You know, if women would just act right and uh, be attracted to him, we wouldn't have any of these problems. And then he starts talking about his porn addiction. So I I've been addicted, extremely severely addicted to pornography, watching, you know, <clears throat> fart porn and shit porn and. You know, also watching a lot of girl burping videos, both on YouTube and TikTok. I love that Marshall Mathers pines for the good old days, you know, when women were women and men were men. Meaning, you know, women should shut the fuck up, be demure, dainty, and guys should be manly, forceful, masculine. But then he turns around and watches porn where women are basically defiling guys, like squatting over their face and laying a big brown coil right over the dude's mouth farting right in his face take that you worthless little bug i also wanted to be very clear about something in this video today when i say that i am scared of women yeah he's he's afraid to talk to women he was mentioning at Walmart and Meyer when he sees women in the store he uh, clams up he can't talk to them i'm not afraid of vagina Noted. And I know a lot of trolls, especially the... It's okay to be a little anxious around vagina. <laughs> it is a very foreign alien looking object. I am not afraid of vagina. I'm not scared of vagina. Oh, he's afraid. You can hear it in his voice. I'm scared of attractive women because... They have vaginas? Attractive women make me feel shy. You know, in the end, this uh, new video really just serves as a Marshall Mathers the fourth greatest hits. He calls himself a loser. He blames a lot of this on women. Men will never have it easy as women, and we never did have it easy as them. Men are the ones who are truly oppressed. People. Women are much more privileged nowadays than compared to men. And they're only getting more spoiled and rotten as time goes on. And they won't fart in his face. And more privileged. It's the they're, biggest travesty. They're at a much higher advantage than compared to men. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that Marshall Mathers IV is back. So hopefully we'll continue to have uh, some amazing content from him. Let's move on now. One of our uh, newer favorite Utards has been Tamir, who is being tortured by uh, some AI system and possibly Emma Stone. If you're new to the program, look, I do not have the time to explain this to you. Just trust me when I say what I say. This man hates Emma Stone. This past weekend, though, uh, Tamir posted a new video, and boy, are we getting a lot of new information about him. I'm learning so much about Tamir. So today... I stumbled upon a picture of a very attractive woman and I thought that if I had sex with her, I could come inside her several times. Is it just me or is Tamir getting exponentially more horny in these videos? I don't know. You know, when we first started featuring him, all of the content was really about how much he hated Emma Stone and how the AI was making his uh, feet twitch or something. I'm glad he's getting past that. Don't get me wrong. It's just very weird to uh, see Tamir as a sexual being. It could be a good opportunity to test the Viagra prescribed to me. Well, there's the first piece of new information. Tamir has a doctor that prescribed Viagra to him. If I was the doctor, my first question would be like, really, Tamir, you're really having sex? You need this prescription? I have a hard time believing that. Okay, apparently he convinced the doctor that Viagra was needed. By the urologist 
Due to my erectile dysfunction problem, probably due to having used or abused anabolic steroids in the past. New piece of information number two. Tamir had a substance abuse problem. He was a roid head. So I took a pill. Somehow I don't think this story is going to have a happy ending. In any sense of that phrase. And the evil AI began twitching my thighs. Ooh, twitching thighs, not your dick. I was waiting for the AI to appear. And completely pissed me off. And made me angry. angry, And completely, completely ruined my sexual mood. So I wasn't in the mood any more at all i was angry and i was furious tamir then said that uh, look he, he was gonna try to calm himself down enjoy a meal and then maybe after the meal he'll get his boner but the ai had other plans for three hours three whole hours the ai kept abusing my body it kept doing all sorts of unwanted things to my body, twitching various parts of my body, stimulating my feet, stimulating my lower legs, torturing me for those three entire hours. At no point did the AI ever stimulate his genitals. You know, because the AI is evil. Still, Tamir tried to persevere. He was like, I am going to force myself to masturbate. I will take matters into my own hand. So he tried looking at that picture again, and uh, he was not attracted to it anymore. I wasn't able to enjoy it, much less to get an erection. I no longer felt like having sex with that woman, much less coming inside her several times. I wasn't in the mood at all. Dude, just don't force it. Play some video games or watch TV. And I tried masturbating to that picture oh. just to, to see if the fucking Viagra would still work. Here's the problem. But it didn't. Yeah, it's not going to work and it's not going to be fun. I was completely not in the mood. I was angry and frustrated and my mind filled with suffering from the torture. And I wasn't able to get an erection. Your masturbation is supposed to make you feel good. I forced myself to ejaculate. I masturbated until I came, but even then I wasn't able to get an erection. Hey, you know what? I would take that as a win. You powered through, my man. Your body said no. The AI was fucking around with you. You lost all interest in sex and you were still able to ejaculate? You willed that come out of your dick hole. So I have no way of knowing if the Viagra would have worked if the AI hadn't tortured me. It is unfair. Why am I not allowed to enjoy my life? I think Emma Stone is behind this, obviously. Because of all the Viagra he took. Even worse. He, you know, he's got a headache and high blood pressure, I think. The combined effect of the Viagra plus the anger and nervousness from being tortured by the AI elevated the blood pressure in my brain and it feels like my head is about to explode. Viagra, Virginia, none of these Utahs can pronounce anything right. Why do I have to suffer like this? Okay. It is unfair! <laughs> it is unfair! It's another video where poor Tamir is being tortured by something. AI, Emma Stone, a non-functioning dick. That boy has a lot of problems. Speaking of problems, oh, real quick, Mead Skelton, our good friend, uh, did a live stream this weekend. Uh, you know, standard Yankee Doodle dandy singing shit. He did make mention, though, of uh, his weight loss journey. As we learned last week, uh, the boy weighs about 194 pounds. He's trying to get down to 190. Already, the excuses are starting. Yes, I was pretty shocked myself when I saw I've turned into quite a porker. But um, after all my weight loss efforts, I think it will pay off because this is a lifelong thing, you know, for me. And I do believe that sometimes obesity is caused by demonic forces. So we can rebuke those, too. 
It's never his fault. There's always outside forces at play. This time, otherworldly forces making him fat. Demonic spirits. I, I guess forcing him to eat. It kind of makes sense. You know, didn't he put like thousands of dollars worth of DoorDash orders on his dad's credit card? Sounds like someone who was possessed. Possessed by carbs. Anyway, good luck, Amid, on uh, your weight loss journey. And I look forward to this week's weigh-in. I believe it. Uh, we've got one coming up tomorrow, weigh-in Wednesday. We'll see what uh, progress he's made. Oh, I am giddy with excitement. <laughs> Wednesday is now the day I look forward to. It's no longer the weekend. I love me some weigh-in Wednesdays. All right, and with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist. To the fucked up news right now. Listen, if you enjoy Distorted View Daily, please consider signing up for The Sideshow. That is our member side where you gain full access to the entire archive of programs. More importantly, every week I do brand new Sideshow exclusive episodes, typically on Tuesday and Thursday. This week's going to be a little bit different because we're starting late. Uh, That means tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. If you want to hear it, you got to sign up. Thankfully, memberships are very inexpensive. Very affordable. Only $6.99 a month, even less if you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. You gain access to a special password-protected RSS feed. RSS feeds are those things that you plug into your podcast app. So like Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Cast, most of the big ones uh, the Sideshow feed works with. There's instructions, of course, on the Sideshow. For an even easier way, though, to gain access to those Sideshow exclusive episodes, if you happen to use Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can now sign up right in those apps. Just a few taps. You pay right through that thing. Super simple. Uh, and you immediately gain access. You'll see the Sideshow exclusive episodes right alongside the uh, the normal free episodes in your feed. For more information, check out distortedview.com and superfreaksideshow.com. Final way to help support the program, we've got a Patreon account. A lot of people familiar with Patreon. You all know how that works, right? You can pledge a few bucks my way. If you pledge at least $5, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. And yes, we do have some patrons checking in today. Again, patreon.com slash distorted view. All right, three very quick stories now. First up, you know, when I was doing the introduction to uh, yesterday's best of show, I mentioned that uh, the Smash Mouth singer was not doing so well and he may have died. Well, he did die. I think it was reported sometime in the afternoon. So, uh, you know, called it. Boy, I'm calling deaths left and right, aren't I? Dogs, 90s band vocalists. Bing, bang, boom. I'm like the Grim Reaper over here. Everyone I mentioned drops dead. Do not fuck with me, freaks. I wield so much power. Now, truth be told, I don't know a a whole lot about Steve Harwell. That's the former Smash Mouth singer who sadly passed away. I do know that he was 56. And, uh, you know, when I was younger, like in my 20s, I would look at someone who died at 56 and be like, oh, okay, well, they're old. Now, I'm like 13 years away from being that age. I hope... For my sake, this dude lived a hard life, like was a drug user or alcoholic or something. Because if he was like a healthy dude, I don't stand a chance. There's no way I'm making it to 56. I would most certainly not be considered healthy. You know what I mean? Uh, Steve Harwell, the former lead vocalist of rock band Smash Mouth. Here's the thing. Smash Mouth is still together, just without Steve Harwell. And they kicked him out several years ago, long before he was on his deathbed here. And it's always so strange to me when a band kicks out its lead singer. Like, let's be honest, the lead singer really is the most important part of the band. That's who you hear singing the song. And a lot of times they're the ones that write the songs. So the fact that there's still a Smash Mouth touring and releasing CDs with someone who doesn't sound anything like this guy is so weird. It's not completely unheard of, you know, Van Halen replaced David Lee Roth with Sammy Hagar. And, you know, a lot of people didn't like it, but, you know, Van Halen was pretty successful still without David Lee Roth. That being said, Smash Mouth is no Van Halen. Anyway, uh, the lead vocalist of Smash Mouth died Monday at the age of 56. Robert Hayes, a longtime manager of Harwell and the band, confirmed the singer's death. Quote, Steve Harwell passed away this morning at his home in Boise, Idaho. 
He was surrounded by family and friends and passed peacefully and comfortably, Hayes said in a statement. Steve Harwell was a true American original, a larger-than-life character who shot up into the sky like a Roman candle. Steve should be remembered for his unwavering focus and impassioned determination to reach the heights of pop stardom, and the fact that he achieved this near-impossible goal with very limited musical experience. Would have been so great if the words talent were after that. (laughs) Very limited musical talent makes his accomplishment all the more remarkable. But by the way, I have nothing against Smash Mouth. I am not a Smash Mouth hater. I mean, I wasn't a huge fan of the song All Star. I think maybe that had something to do with it being so overplayed. But that uh, first this the first song they came out with that was popular. I kind of like, right? It was different walking on the moon or sun or whatever the hell that guy was walking on. Hayes told USA Today on September 3rd that the singer was resting at home and being cared for by his fiance and hospice care. Oh, that's never a good sign. Hospice care really is end of life care, right? Uh, TMZ was the first outlet to report the news. They reported that Harwell has reached the final stage of liver failure. Oh, he was a hardcore alcoholic. Whoo. Thank God. I mean, for me, thank God. I can rest a little easier tonight. I totally, my mind can process a 56-year-old alcoholic who died. I won't immediately think, well, Tim, you're next. Because I barely drink anymore. Uh, With hits like Walking on the Sun. Ah, sun, he was walking on. All Star and a cover of Can't Get Enough of You, Baby. Smash Mouth uh, commandeered, commandeered pop radio in the late 90s. Their quirky pop approach and Harwell's distinctive rumble of a voice distinguished the band from peers, including Sugar Ray okay, and Third Eye Blind. Their debut album sold more than 2 million copies. Their sophomore album, which, by the way, is a very hard thing to produce. You know, the uh, coming out with that second album and matching the success of the first. There's a reason why there's this thing called uh, the sophomore slump. Very hard to replicate that success. Well, they did. Uh, the second album called Astro Lounge unveiled All Star and uh, it sold three million copies. That song reached number four on the Billboard Hat 100 and remains a pop culture touchstone. In October 2021, Harwell announced his retirement from the band. Oh, so he wasn't kicked out. I mean, I'm sure his bandmates were like, dude, maybe maybe it's time to hang it up. What prompted the retirement was a fumbled performance at a beer and wine festival. It's a dangerous place for an alcoholic to perform. During an appearance with the band at The Big Sip in New York, a video of Harwell slurring his speech cursing at the audience, and making a gesture that resembled a Nazi salute became viral. Oh, I don't remember the Nazi salute, although this all makes sense because I saw a lot of tweets after this guy died who said uh, stuff like, I don't care, F that guy, and uh, who cares if a Nazi croaks? I did track down that video. There's no usable audio. It's just, you know, him drunk. They're, you know, they're having lots of audio problems. Speakers are blowing out. Sometimes he doesn't even sing. It's just the backing track, and he's just sort of leaned up against a wall drinking. He dropped his cup full of beer at, at one point as well. I mean, the guy had some problems. As for that Nazi salute thing, uh, his reps at the time said in a news release that the video had been taken out of context to mis- uh, misrepresent the singer. Apparently, he was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy. The heart disease led to serious medical setbacks. Uh, it affected his speech and memory. It all uh, really started to uh, spell the end for poor Steve, though. So I don't think he was really a Nazi sympathizer. Cut him a little bit of slack. He was an alcoholic with a bad heart. Uh, Second story we have for you today. We as a society are just about uh, renting out everything. You know, we uh, started by renting out our cars. They became taxis, you know, Uber, Lyft. Then we started uh, renting out our own homes. Airbnb. Now, even if you don't really own a place of your own, as long as you have a room, specifically a bedroom, you can make money. How? By renting out the other half of your bed. It's called hot bedding, and it's a great way to get raped and make a little bit of extra cash. You know, if you're willing to get raped, there are plenty of ways to make money. Not a lot of people are okay with it. They're not real entrepreneurs like you and I. The greater the risk to your genitals, the greater the reward. That's what I always say. It's a mantra I live by. 
Yes, the New York Post reports she's living the dream, baby, sleeping with folks and charging them per lay. But she's not a whore, per se. She's just welcoming strangers into her bed. Sounds like a whore, right? She's making an extra $600 a month by renting out the unoccupied side of her mattress. The very same side where her ex-boyfriend once slept for two years. It sounds like she's doing this to get back at him. I have a new guy in my bed every night sleeping by my side. The uh, side hustle is part of the hot bedding trend, which I don't even think is a real trend. I think the New York Post found one woman who's doing this and it's now labeled a trend. I could be wrong, though. I mean, this just sounds so incredibly dangerous and stupid. Then again, I've seen people willing to shoot themselves with a gun for 50 bucks. So, yeah, maybe hot bedding is a trend. Quote, hot bedding is excellent for people who are able to detach emotionally and sleep next to another person in a completely respectful and non-strings attached manner. That's according to Monique Jeremiah, 36, an entrepreneur from Queensland, Australia. And while hot bedding has yet to achieve viral glory on social media, a popular TikTok clip, which garner, uh, garnered over 762,000 views, detailed the monetary benefits as well as the potential dangers. Oh, I think we all know the dangers of the fad. Again, I don't think this is a full bloom fad yet, right? One bitch in Australia is trying this. Jeremiah says the trend can be extremely lucrative as long as both parties are very clear on the terms. Quote, it takes two people who respect each other's space. This is why you can't just rent it out all willy nilly. How do you know this stranger is going to respect your space and boundaries? It's just like sharing a room with two beds. However, you only sleep in the same bed together. So you definitely want a big bed and lots of space in the room to make it worthwhile. Jeremiah, the founder of Diversity Models, an agency that specializes in providing curvy, cultural, and mature age models for businesses. Just say unattractive. I bet you Depends Undergarments used diversity models for uh, all the people that appear on their packaging. Remember we were talking about that last week? Are you an Asian who doesn't mind doing diaper photo shoots? Boy, do I have a lucrative gig for you. All right, she began leasing out her boudoir at the onset of the pandemic as an <laughs> That's like the worst time to start this business. You don't want to be you're going to be literally sleeping next to someone, not even like a foot away from you breathing on you all night. How did this woman not die from COVID seven times? Anyway, she began leasing out uh, her bedroom at the onset of the pandemic as an effort to supplement her income and enjoy some much needed companionship. Quote, at the start of COVID in early 2020, I suddenly found myself single. My thriving business of an international education agency and student accommodation collapsed overnight and my teaching career suddenly became unfulfilling as education went online. Like millions around the world, she was forced to make quick changes to her professional life in order to survive the global health crisis. I'll let random dudes climb in my bed. While Jeremiah chose hot bedding as her lifesaver, others like NYC engineer Gautier Quafford, 32, took up baking bread. <laughs> what? That's nothing like that. They're completely different things. Jeremiah said, my life was literally imploding beyond my control. I knew my only option was to innovate and think outside the box, and that's how I decided to do hot bedding. Her first client, I guess, was an ex. You charged your ex to sleep with you again? Uh, he will be sleeping with me again soon, said the moneymaker, adding that her platonic sleepover prices are going up due to inflation. I'll be raising the hot bedding rate to a little over $160 a week, or $640 a month when he returns. The cost of living has gone up significantly in Australia, and my room is still a beautiful, comfortable room the size of a five-star hotel suite. Jeremiah says this is the perfect situation, especially if you are a sapiosexual uh, like myself, and you prefer companionship over the physical. Being an entrepreneur is already a lonely journey as you build a company, so why sleep alone when you can sleep with a companion? Someone with the same discipline and drive while making money in your sleep. And there's only like a 40% chance the dude's going to try to fuck you or murder you in your sleep. I like those odds. All right, a final story we have for you today. Yeah, this one comes from the UK. Apparently there is a supermarket chain over there called Lidl or Lidl, L-I-D-L. However you pronounce it, they have issued a recall of Paw Patrol snacks. 
Do they kill children? Are they poison? Fentanyl? Gasoline? What's in those little gummies? Unfortunately, or fortunately, if you care for the well-being of children, uh, there's no poison in the snacks. They're perfectly edible. It's the packaging that seems to be a problem. Supermarket giant Lidl, or Little, has issued a recall of Paw Patrol snacks after the website listed on the product's packaging began displaying explicit content unsuitable for children. Someone let the domain lapse, I think, and immediately a porn website snatched it up. Before the show, I actually did look up to see if there was a porn titled This Ain't Paw Patrol XXX. Oh, how great it would be if, if that's what the website linked to, right? But unfortunately, no. There is no Paw Patrol porn parody yet. Little or Lidl, which operates more than 12,000 stores globally, is urging shoppers in the United Kingdom to return the snacks for a full refund. Affected products include Paw Patrol Yummy Bakes and Paw Patrol Mini Biscotti Snacks, recommended for children aged 2 and above. The grocery store recall notice, dated August 22nd, warns that the product's packaging contains a web address that has been compromised to display content not suitable for child consumption. We recommend that customers refrain from viewing that URL and return this product to the nearest store where a full refund will be given. If you visit the website appykidsco.com, A-P-P-Y-K-I-D-S-C-O, maybe it's supposed to be Happy Kids Co. They left out the H. I bet you that's what happened here. Now, if you try, uh, you know, visiting that website on uh, your desktop computer, you'll get like a blank page or a Chinese search engine something or other. But uh, if you load up the page on a, a mobile phone, which I have done here, uh, you see lots of uh, dick, sl dick slapping on pussies, bouncing titties, little uh, thumbnails of hardcore penetration, you know, stuff for the kids. Oh, they would love this. It's not uncommon for web hosts to display ads as an additional source of revenue for domains that are empty or left to expire. I don't think that that's what's happening here. It's not known exactly how long the website was redirecting visitors to the explicit page, but the grocery store's notice states that all stock is affected. Public internet records show the domain is registered to a person located in Lingyonggang, China. I mean, how many people are looking at uh, the Paw Patrol snack packaging and going to the domains listed there? You know what I mean? An archived version of the website shows that the website previously belonged to the manufacturer of Paw Patrol products. Oh, a sub-brand of Appy Food. So it wasn't supposed to be happy. It was Appy all along. Yes, a sub-brand of Appy Foods and Drinks named Appy Kids Co. Information listed on the company's house website shows that Appy Food and Drink was dissolved in June 2022. So that explains why the domain was uh, not renewed. The company doesn't exist anymore. Aha, we got to the bottom of it. Uh, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Tuesday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. All right, guys, love to hear from you freaks, and there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash distortedviewshow. Uh, we've got a bunch of patrons calling in. Let's check in with a few of hey, them. Hey, Tim, uh, it's Great Big Pete here, just calling to tell you, talk to you a little bit about the Crash Test Dummies guy. You were saying that that vocal fry... Um, well, you know, maybe it is. Once there was a guy. Who, maybe it isn't, and you were saying yeah. it was uh, an affectation. Uh, that's where I'll have to disagree with you. Oh. Uh, back in university, I was on uh, college, college campus radio, and I did a radio interview with the singer from the Crash Test Dummies. His name is... Does he talk like this? Brad Roberts. Yeah. And one of our listeners asked the... <laughs> what must be an insufferable question for him. Hey, Brad, how does your voice get so low? And he responded to us by saying, It's all in the cards you're dealt, just like the size of your penis is beyond your control. I bet you he has a huge hog. 
That would be my question. That would be a uh, real quick uh, follow-up question. Can I see your pee-pee, please? And, I mean, the guy just speaks like that, too. Oh, okay. And he said, no, really, uh, actually, his grandfather... Right, I'll give that guy a pass. The guy from Crash Test Dummies gets a pass. But I don't think the guy from, uh, what was it, The Calling or Lifehouse or whatever the band I was talking about, I don't think he normally talks like that. Or, I'm going to have to go back and find some uh, interviews. Who is a him. smaller man than him, had an even deeper voice yeah. than he does. So, yeah, it's just a fun fact. I do, honestly don't think it's an affectation because... You kind of have a low voice, too. This when we were speaking... You working with some low-hanging tanks? To him, he didn't... Uh, is that why your name is Great Big Pete? Drop out of that affectation. Like so. Great Big Peter. Oh. <laughs> I just put that together. Uh, yeah, there you go. Anywho, uh, gotta let you go. Uh, talk to you later. Bye, Tim. All right. Thank you very much, Great Big Pete, for the information. Hey, Timmy Boo. <laughs> it's Ailey Thomas asking. Are you, you sure you're not the lead singer of the Crash Test Dummies? Do you also listen to Laura Branigan? <laughs> is that the singer that Mead is oddly obsessed with or was when he was a kid <laughs> like he loved Laura Branigan of all people hey Timmy oh, Boo it's no. Chaz the tandem stacker you were talking about uh, the frog music tonight on the show yeah. and uh, just wanted to mention you weren't sure where it came from it came from you it came from your show do you remember we used to have a, ca a person a caller called Spiral Hamfucker who had his own theme music he played he uses frog sounds in that oh, uh, that song. Go okay. back, listen to it. Spiral ham fucker. Anyways, you're welcome, and keep up the great work. Cheers. I love when I mention something and I realize, wait a second, this isn't an original thought. Someone else came up with it, and it turns out it was me, and I don't remember it because I have such shitty memory. Hey, can you move? little baby faggot. Uh, calling in to talk about Mitch McConnell. Uh, oh. I've seen the video of what happened, and what I think is happening is uh he's having what's known as a focal onset impaired awareness seizure oh of course a four ass you can just you can just say that you don't have to go through the whole focal onset impaired awareness seizure. we just we just call them four asses he was four assing up a storm over there my question is it uh is it age related you know is he stroking out it, or is it because of the concussions that he had earlier this year or last year or whatever? Um, these are when somebody basically locks up and you got to smack them around to get them to reboot or give them some time or whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm familiar with it. It would be so great if you know if this keeps happening in the future and, and uh, they just start smacking Mitch McConnell around until he comes to. Like, that's how you reboot him. Because I do have epilepsy. Um, oh. I had what you call the grand mal seizure or the stop, drop, and flop, as I like to call it. I mm -hmm. uh, haven't had one in a long, long time. But, uh, yeah, I am familiar with it. it. It really looks to me like, you know, that can be caused by anything. Strokes, epilepsy, you name it. There's a, you know, seizures aren't just epilepsy, right? There's seizure is a symptom of the epilepsy. So my question is, like, what? I mean, if, you ex if you've experienced something similar, what? is going through your head at that moment like are you can you is it just you can't speak or communicate in any way and you, you're just sort of frozen but you're aware that you're frozen or are you completely like out of it and then it's almost like you're asleep and then you, you all of a sudden you like come to so it could be the result of some sort of brain damage chemical imbalance mm. mitch mcconnell so let's face it Good chance he has one of those two, and he's super old, so it's good chance right. it's a stroke. So, can't say exactly what it is, but it looks to me like a focal onset impaired awareness seizure. Um, they used to be called a bunch of other different things, but the epilepsy people have gotten together and kind of helped simplify. I guess what you what yeah, you call that just seizures. that rolls off the tongue that name that you said there. And um, the Epilepsy Foundation has a great website if you care about that. But anyways. Uh, I hope you and your day are doing well. Um, tell Lord Douche that uh, we'll still pay for the plumber. 
I, I will pass that along. Well, thank you so much. A lot of good calls today. Good information coming in for once. All right. Uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the program. Want you guys to email me? Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you, 206 666 4463. That's 206 666. Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. I'm not afraid of vagina. I am not afraid of vagina. I'm not scared of vagina. Spread the distortion. STD. Tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. I will see you back tomorrow if and only if you're Sideshow members. Otherwise, I'll see you back on Thursday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Another excellent podcast from the Scribe Media Group. Learn more at scribe.net.